So, okay, Gulza, let's uh, start with you. I think Dr. Mittal will join us anyway. Uh, so, um, we have been talking about AI healthcare. We had a very interesting session. Uh, uh, Dr. Arash Sharma also was here. He gave us a quite an insight. To, and over a period of time, I think when we, whenever we are talking about AI and healthcare, this is one of the areas because it involves our bodies, it involves patients, it involves electronic uh, uh, medical records, it involves a host of other things that are very connected. And people are really concerned whether AI can do a good job or as good a job as uh, healthcare. So now, uh, since you have done a lot of work and you understand the kind of uh, what's happening in the global center and what's happening in a country like India, could you give us a very quick perspective on uh, where exactly is AI, whether it's the, as I think we were just discussing earlier, it's probably a little premature to just talk about AI and talk earlier a little more about the building blocks of AI and then get to AI. Uh... No, thanks, first of all, for inviting me here and uh, giving this opportunity to talk about something uh, very exciting. Um, and, a, and a new domain, a new horizon is developing up. Speaking on the AI and AI in healthcare, I just wanted to make this one point on what is the need of AI in healthcare, right? What's the promise of AI in healthcare? Why do we even need AI? I mean, like, healthcare is obviously a subject in a domain which is hundreds of years old, even in its kind of modern history, historical practices. And is there really a role for AI to play in healthcare? And is that really evident? So the first thing is healthcare and, and the things that we see in it deals with lots of complexity of data and it has large data sets. So whenever we encounter that scenario, the second is we also have the situation of inconsistency. We have this uh, problem of inaccessibility and affordability uh, and distribution of specialists, so lack of specialists. And I think that's very evident, obviously, in developing worlds, very evident in India. Uh, and these are the problems in medicine. When you have these problems, then machine learning and AI becomes really relevant. And one such, one such example on the global scale to give you is, let's talk about like lung cancer. Uh, now lung cancer is very interesting because obviously it forms one of the large reasons of deaths. It's up till now, it was one of the top, top most cancers in the world. It results in about 1.8 million deaths across the world. Uh, and it's not detected early on. In, in lung cancer, it's evident that less than 80, like, less than 80% of the people. Uh, it, there is no detection for lung cancer at the early stages. Uh, for more than 80% for, for of the people worldwide, and in India it's perhaps even more, that number is more. Now, it's also known that there could be a 20 to 40% reduction in mortality if it was detected early. You could detect lung cancer early, you could do a low dose CT scan to do that. But then CT scans are very hard to do. and especially if you did a low-dose CT scan in the early stages, it's a very, very subtle thing to discover lung cancer, and you would have lots of false positives and false negatives. We at Google Health uh, recently published uh, in Nature Medicine uh, our research which establishes the fact that you could develop a state-of-the-art uh, model for analyzing CT scans and detecting lung malignancies, and that could reduce absolute number of false positives and false negatives. And we could do that because we took a lot of data sets that came from uh, the National Cancer Institute in the US and Northwestern University in the US. And using that, we developed our own labeling information and, and were able to do that. Now, there are lots of such progresses happening. So uh, the question is, as AI and healthcare develops, one of the things to think about is, is there an opportunity for India and what is that opportunity? And India's opportunity really lies in being, I believe, in being a nurturing ground for the intersection of healthcare and, and technologies and deep technologies. And towards that intersection, the most important thing is to have the building blocks. And if you think about building blocks, where is the opportunity for building blocks? One such opportunity of building blocks is in the states of India, because health is a state subject. And state is the primary care provider, is the, uh, is the public health sector prim primary care provider, and the largest one, uh, owning district hospitals, owning state hospitals, and also primary care centers. 
if you could imagine a future in which we could have a mobile first ai accelerated front end the mobile application in the health of, in the hands of frontline health workers that digitization of primary care could serve as a building block on top of which connections would get established then to hospitals and doctors and a lot of ai models could be built on it this one such thing is being done in tamil nadu since dr neeraj is here right. and the population health registry exactly. is a project that they are doing and it's very very interesting and absolutely inspiring work that they are doing yeah, so we can see mr mithil has already joined us uh, so welcome mr mithil and uh, uh, i think uh, gulzar clearly uh, just uh, rightly pointed out and we all know that uh, health is a state uh, subject so now in this particular point i know that uh, the tamil nadu government has been doing a lot of initiatives with the emerging technologies i am here my i am i'm actually on the road so i just switched off my video to preserve bandwidth okay okay you can do that you can do that so uh, basically i think uh, the tamil nadu government has been doing a lot of work as far as uh, Uh, emerging technologies and uh, ai is concerned so could you uh, give us a few examples of where these uh, technologies are being used and how it is uh, what is the kind of promise of ai in the healthcare sector thanks lesley Th hi gulzar uh, thanks uh, for Mr. you know have me over uh, with you guys um, see the the tamil nadu government uh, is doing a lot of work work using ai for health i mean improving access improving you know diagnostics improving possibly you know data integration across platforms i think you know the promise of ai really lies in uh, reducing the administrative burden of you know clinical documentation right i mean we all know that if we have uh, you know uh, the models which can actually take out the burden of doctors in writing notes and you know converting them into a readable language uh, we could increase our throughputs very very uh, you know uh, multifold uh, the the other you know uh, reasons why we can use is to extract information on patients you know automatically right uh, if there is old data which is 10 years old uh, you could do better diagnosis if you had access to that so ai can actually help and export patient data which has been taken in traditional forms uh, with minimal error another area where i think AI really holds promises in helping clinical decision making, right? I mean, it has risks, but I think it has tremendous prof, uh, you know, promise to predict high risk conditions, enable more personalized care, and these are very important in India because if if we can, you know, automate some of these things, the the patient to doctor ratio, which is abysmal, can really, you know, go up. um thank you dr mithil but i think uh, uh, i think you clearly enumerated some of the examples as far as the promise of ai is concerned but my question to both uh, you and uh, gulzar is where as we see the promise of uh, uh, ai there are also a little concerned areas around it for instance let me just ask a, a, a show of hands in the audience how many of you in this audience would trust an ai doctor i see one hand up only one okay how, how many of in this audience won't trust a, an ai doctor okay i, I think yeah, yeah but i yeah, so, so, <laughs> he switched on this video to see so i think uh, uh, many people are undecided in this area so i don't think they know whether they are going to trust an ai doctor or uh, uh, not trusted ai, AI doctor uh, so uh, dr mithun my question to you and then later to gulzar is <clears throat> what is being done to build trust in these ai systems uh you see i think uh, the 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 fundamental uh, question whether you can trust an ai doctor or not you see there are a lot of whatsapp doctors these days right i mean we have been treating ourselves with whatsapp universities uh, many of us go on you know google websites and you try to say okay i've got this thing what medicine should i take so a lot of things are already happening i think you know uh especially during covid times i think we have become used to uh, using electronic data and you know kind of self diagnosing a lot of things and this is essentially the the promise of ai as well right i mean it it can it can definitely give better results than what we are doing today uh and and as the models improve as the data which we use to train these models and that's the risk right i mean one of the risks is you use us data to train a indian Uh, in indian algorithm to detect say tuberculosis right i mean tuberculosis is hardly there in the us 
uh, but it is prevalent in India. Now, you know, that's why you have to be very careful about the data you use. Uh, can you lead, can you, you know, trust autonomous decision making, right? Can you trust robots to do surgeries? I mean, I know in uh, many hospitals here, people have started using surgeries using robots and, you know, they claim that the accuracies are really, really high. Uh, one of the risks which I also see is that the we all feel and it is happening every, uh, in many places that insurance companies could use this data to to you know predict risks for individuals and you know it could deny insurance to people who are really high risk. It is already happening in the U.S. Um, and and so therefore I think there are many risks there and I think there has to be a regulatory regime. Uh, there has to be, for example, something called algorithmic accountability. Uh, suppose companies are required to actually, uh, you know, test their algorithms every now and then against data and make sure that they fit. So these are the kind of things we need to do to increase the trust. Yeah, I think very valid points. Responsible AI, explainable AI, and uh, Gulzar, you may want to add some few points. Yeah, yeah, no, I think this is a very interesting question. Trust. I think uh, in the AI domain, whether it's healthcare or medicine, uh, technology first has to solve for trust. And the question is, how do you solve it? I think you have to realize one thing about AI, whether there is an AI doctor or not. I don't think so there is one, thankfully. Uh, is that AI is an amplifier. It's not an end solution. So it amplifies what you feed into it. So whatever data that we feed into AI is going to get amplified. So if it's biased data, it's going to get amplified. If it's error prone, if it's, if it's only relevant for white skin people or if it's only relevant for you know, very highly affluent people, then it will get amplified. So one of the important things, and this is where India's leapfrog opportunity is, that healthcare, unlike the West, unlike the US, and unlike the developed economies, we have the opportunity to not develop digital healthcare in silos. Digital healthcare in the US today has, is advanced, is very advanced. I mean, a, a doctor on an average spends six hours on EMR, by the way, in the US, when we can't afford that. But it's very siloed. We have the leap, we have the opportunity to develop it in a way which is standard, which is interoperable, which talks to each other. And this is what, you know, I was hearing Arish Sharma talk about today, is how we could apply the thinking of UPI, though it's very complicated. Health is much more complicated. It can't be simply thought of just as unified payment interface. Unified health interface has, is multidimensional, is very uh, complex in its terms of like uh, the domains that it has to deal with, the providers that it has to deal with. But therein lies our opportunity. If you want to build for trust, then you have to get the right data set in and you have to write, build the right building blocks. And those have to be built across the population, which is why I was indicating earlier that it's no more a subject of public health or individual health. It's a subject of population health. And I think India has this opportunity to recognize that it's not individual, it's not public, it's population health. And how do you do that? So clearly India has a lot of opportunity. There are states like Tamil Nadu, etc. that are doing a lot of work. But except that we also have to build trust. The frameworks have to be there. The building blocks are already there. I can take a quick question from the audience, either addressed to Dr. Mittal or to Gulzar. Anybody on AI and healthcare? Yes, please. Uh, can we get a mic over here, gentlemen? Please. Thank you. I just want to say that you asked a question about the uh, getting treatment from the AI. And I think it, it will be a best approach, but in the beginning it has to be... So, it, so, so one second, is there a question? Um, yeah, so sorry. the question is that when the day is going to come? Because currently we are just thinking of AI, a lot of discussion, when we can get the medical treatment from AI. Anybody, Dr. Mittal, Gulzar, anybody? Dr. Mithil? Gulzar, go ahead. Yeah, okay, thank you. Uh, I, I, think the, I think this is staged. Any technology for it to realize its full potential at stage. AI today, the biggest moonshot for AI, I would say, is to increase the human competency itself. Healthcare is far too complicated for us to immediately imagine a future. I mean, if you, if you were writing science fiction, you can write whatever you want. But if you were, if you've been realistic about it, we are very far from that, from that stage, but what we, are, what we really have in front of us is assistance. How do you increase human, con human consistency? How do you increase human competency? And you could do that by screening, you could do that by monitoring. A lot of that is happening on the horizon. The 
the active sensors that are around us and the passive sensors that are around us and the data that is being read from it and intelligence that is being put in the sensors is taking care of our well-being already. The, the fact that there is a screening algorithm happening on CT scans, there's a huge lack of radiologists across the world and more so in India as well. Today, you, one, one would probably would not know, but the reality is that if you had uh, you know, CT scan done because of COVID, probably an AI algorithm is reading your CT scan and helping the radiologist do so, the detection early on. I mean, basically a lot of work is being done, but you cannot put a date on it. So I think that's in short. Uh, last question, please. Yes, Mr. Ajat. Uh, no, no. Uh, sir. Okay. okay. Okay, okay. Please, please. One of you go ahead. I won't be able to take so, one more. Uh, everybody knows that in the doctors in our country is heavily skewed based on the, the number of population addressed. So, like, when can one say that the data is good enough for the uh, uh, AI, the AI doctor to become reliable so that anybody can say that I'm, if I'm ill, I can choose an AI doctor at what I point of time? I think you're again, again doing the same thing. You're asking for certainty out here. No, I'm saying when, will, when one can say that the data is good enough for the AI to become mature. Doctor. I... Let me, let me respond to this question uh, from a, you know, a public policy perspective. Uh, you see, there will, never be a, there will never be a point where you can say with certainty that uh, you know, AI will take over completely. Uh, even doctors make mistakes today, right? Uh, you do get cases where doctors have made mistakes. Uh, I think you can reduce some of their mistakes. Uh, but I think AI will always make some mistakes which normal doctors may not make. And I think that gap is, to reduce that gap, it will take a significantly long amount of time and a lot of iterations. Okay, folks, uh, Dr. Mittal at the hard stop, and uh, I think we have also run out of time. So uh, thank you, Dr. Mittal. Thank you, Gulzar, for thank the you lovely chat. Uh,